Hello and welcome to a chessamar chess. And today we have something that I have wanted to do for a long time. We have dual commentary ASMR. Featuring myself, ASMR Chess, and my good friend, Dido ASMR. And I'll go challenge him now, and um, then I'll explain what it's all about. All about, all about. So, here he is. We will try for a 15 minutes with 10 seconds increment and I'll just write him here in the chat just challenged you alright, alright, I will play play knight f6 Hoping to get into the Budapest. Let's see if he's prepared for the Budapest. Okay, he did not allow the Budapest. The Budapest is with c4 and then I play e5, but he played knight c3, knight to c3. So I'll just take it easy. I guess I'll play e5, saying that maybe it was a little bit of a concession to put the knight on c3, maybe, because that means he can't play c4, yeah, and just going to shout out Dido here, he has awesome channel, where he does really high quality ASMR, um, I guess he's best known for his card tricks, like uh, Tal was a magician on the chessboard and Dido is just a real magician with cards, and, uh, but he also plays chess and he does chess ASMR, and he is also recording this session so when you're done listening to all my rambles if you want to you can go over to his channel Dido ASMR and watch his train of thought watch how he develops his ideas and what he thinks of the position What I think of the position here is that I am doing quite well uh, because I'm able to play c5. I have the bishop pair where uh, oh, there's a little bit of a background noise there. I hope you're okay with that. Um, I have the bishop pair. So my dark squared bishop is unopposed, making it stronger. Uh, my queen is in a little bit of a weird position, but she should be safe out here. I'll just develop, get the pieces into play. Uh, probably play something like bishop to d6. So he played bishop to b5, um, threatening to temporarily double my pawns, but I have no issue with that. I'll just develop bishop to d6, because if he does capture the knight, I will recapture with my b pawn, and then I can resolve the uh, 
double pawns by capturing with c takes d4. So I think that we are doing fine, nothing special, but a little bit of a positional advantage here. Um, he castles, I think I will castle as well. Just have my king here, snug as a bug in a rug. Uh, it's a good idea to castle, especially when you don't know the strength of your opponent. And um, I can of course see that Dido has a rating of 10-10 here. Uh, but that can be misleading. I don't know how many games he played on this profile. With this time control, you can see that my rating is 1300, uh, which is wildly inaccurate. Um, but it's just because I haven't played that many games with this profile and this time control. Alright, um, so where do we put our pieces? Should we go for an attack? How should we conceptualize this position? What do you think, guys? What do you think? What do you think? Um, we could ask him to clarify his intentions with this bishop on b5. We could play a6. That could also be a handy move. Just taking control of b5 so that the knight won't come there. Um, our problem piece is, of course, the bishop on c8. Uh, we would be able, we would want to at some point play e5, but that's not on the cards. Um, so I think actually just a6. If he captures here, I will reinforce d5 by capturing with b takes c6. I will protect the d5 pawn and maybe in the future I will be able to go e5 and then e4 and then I'm just unleashing these two monster bishops along with the queen, some checkmating ideas and um, yeah so far not not much has really happened we have Knights versus bishops, always an interesting dynamic. Okay, so he goes for my c5 pawn with knight to a4. Uh, pretty sure I have to do something about that, so I will not probably play c takes d. Then maybe queen takes, or knight takes, or pawn takes. If queen takes, I could consider actually uh, exchanging the queens and just saying that my bishops will are uh, going to be good in the end game. Um, if knight takes, I could maybe play something like c5, kicking the knight. The knight goes maybe back. Then I attack the other knight with my with bishop d7. Um, I have a lot of center control. I think I like that. And if pawn takes, then that's fine as well. So we just play c takes. And here we see that uh, the a6 move was handy, just stopping any knight b5 ideas. Because now we have both the c pawn and the a pawn guarding a5 and uh, we are just building a nice 
center control here. Um, maybe just activate the rook, rook b8. Just locking a little bit, okay. So he played b3, right, right. Um, how about playing a5, get the bishop out on the uh, this diagonal, on the a6, f8, f1 diagonal. Um, or maybe just playing e5, takes, 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 takes. Then his light squares will be weak. Or maybe we just take it easy, since he has no big threats coming up. Uh, because knight c5 threatens a6, I can play a4, a5 I mean, and it should be okay, I would say. Um, we could play h5, just uh, preparing some h4 shenanigans at some point. We could play, we could play rook e8. Just planning to go, just planning to go e5. We could play bishop d7. Trying to, but then I think actually knight here. Do I want to do something about that knight move? Like queen e7, knight. Takes, takes, take, and yeah. then we win a pawn. But I could also consider doing that. After. Not too sure what the right plane here is. What's the right plan? To get the bishop out, I mean. I think I'll go rook e8. Um, this does not, it, it, it feels like I, I was not able to find a, the correct plan, maybe my idea about What's going on in this position is not, it's not very accurate. Hmm. So what will he do? On knight c5, my plan is queen e7. But actually, he may then play b4. And maybe that's just a lot of trouble for me. So maybe I ignore knight c5 and just accept that he has a good knight in the center. And then I play e5. Oh, let's say it takes. Do I even take with the rook there? Knight takes, queen takes. I'm threatening the knight, so the knight goes probably to d3, winning a tempo against the queen. That looks like it doesn't work, so e5 takes takes with the bishop instead. And then if knight takes, then probably we go rook takes. Okay, he didn't go didn't go knight, he, he went queen d3 instead of knight c5, now I'm thinking maybe a5, bishop a6, 
then c4 takes t c4 takes takes how does that look i don't particularly like that so i think i'll break i'll break in the center no time like the present and i need to get this bishop out of course i am threatening e4 here uh, he can't ignore this there's no knight c5 now for instance because e4 wins um and i think my position is kind of fine kind of fine I think he's playing uh, really well, my opponent. Okay, so that's a kind of a clever idea. Pinning the the pawn because, of course, I can't take. That's that's quite close to checkmate. But. Um, but I do have bishop, bishop f8. Although I'm not going to, I'm not going to sacrifice uh, the rook for the for the knight after e4. So queen will have to move somewhere. I'm not capturing the knight because of this pin with the check very close to checkmate, I have to go bishop f8, but uh, I am I'm fine not winning a piece here, uh, because look at these bishops, these guys are deadly, uh-huh, uh-huh, so played queen to e3 yeah he played queen e3 is he threatening maybe to come queen g5 that could be a bit annoying actually if he wants to trade the queens but I'm guessing I just take the knight and that should be fine so it's okay and that just that's just the winning tactic I guess but the problem here is let's say takes, takes, takes check back here and he has no Takes, 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 check, there. I don't like it. I don't like it, Jimmy. So instead we should connect these rooks by moving this bishop. So where is the most efficient place? We could put this bishop. Where could we put it? Where could we put it? Let's say bishop g4, bishop to g4. Threatens the knight. And if the knight moves, then maybe h4. We could also we could also play bishop h3. The 
is also threatens the night. I'm not exactly sure what to do. I feel Bishop G Bishop G4 is quite good here. We have uh, we have some things going on here if the knight moves. We are looking at the D4 pawn that'll only be protected by the queen. And, um, yeah, this is a nice game. I'm really in love with this game. I don't mean chess in general. It should be pretty obvious that I'm quite infatuated with the royal game. No, I mean uh, this particular game we are playing right now. I think my opponent is playing interesting chess. Um, I think the position is quite balanced, although I I would take black here. Right. Right. So um, he played knight to d2. And um, Are we then maybe playing just um, h5? Just trying to soften his his king's position. Just find a way into the castle uh, because you see these light squares around his king very weak and with this monster bishop um, I could get some good checkmating threats going if I just managed to put just a little bit more pressure my rooks are not doing that much which is a bit of a shame because Dido's rooks are able to defend his king and uh, when I can't get in with my rooks it means that he has more defenders than I have attackers oh he lashes out with c4 which was, which was the move that that I would have played on move 2 instead of knight c3 he now plays a delayed c4 um, just thinking if there is any interesting things with bishop b4 takes, takes and then claiming these light squares even more I think that could be quite interesting and then just so let's say bishop here playing his takes and takes and bishop f3 then infiltrate on the light squares checkmate there of course he'll be able to maybe play something like it's after I play bishop h3 queen e2 to f1 to guard the checkmating square but then he will have a very passive queen I think I will go for that then I will go for that uh, also because the knight cannot easily move since it's pinned to the rook you see it's pinned Alright, are we getting somewhere? We could be getting somewhere. So, my game plan 
has been and remains to get the most bang for the buck, most bang for the buck, bang for the buck, bang for the buck, with this bishop. I think I'm thinking that a bishop on, on f3 is going to be a positional trump that's very, very hard to beat. I'm considering even, yeah, okay, so knight, knight c5, threatening a5, so let's say takes, bishop takes d2, queen takes d2, bishop f3, I don't think he has time to go pawn hunting, Knight takes a6, I think I just even ignore that. Go queen f3. f5, I mean, with the idea to go h3 and just checkmate. And there is no fork here, of course, because bishops move backwards. That's something, that's something a lot of people, including myself, tend to forget that bishops move backwards. That's actually statistically the most missed kind of move on all levels of chess. A long backwards diagonal moves. And can I sack the exchange here? Bishop f3 Knight d7, forking queen and rook, then queen e6 or f5, takes the rook, I go here, checkmate, yeah, I think, I think bishop f3 is uh, becoming a bit of a problem for my esteemed opponent. It's going to be so interesting to go on, for me to go and watch what he was thinking during the game. Mm. Right, right, right. So, where are we? Okay, he does go for the for the fork. And I'm just thinking about, should I go queen f5 or queen e6? Um, I don't think it matters too much. I think maybe queen f5 is a little stronger, but I feel that, like, I think that queen f5 is best, but I feel that queen e6 is best. And, um, oh, I see what he's doing. All oh, right, so queen e6 is, is not good because queen e6, he does not take the rook. He plays knight to, uh, to e5. So if I go here, threatening checkmate, he can chop off the bishop. I think maybe it doesn't work because I take with the pawn and it, I'm still threatening checkmate. Uh, but that whole thing somehow convinced me to go queen f5. So queen f5 it is. Although I would say that um, I would say that if you're trying to figure out if you if you should do the move that you think is best or the move that you feel is best, then do the move you feel because it is your intuition telling you 
something. And your intuition, in my way of thinking about it, is pretty smart. I think your intuition is all the thoughts that um, that your mind that doesn't reach your consciousness, so you you can't you don't get access to it like a, a voice in the head or something like that. But you you do get access to it as a feeling that can inform you um, about a lot of small details that your rational mind could be missing. Like if you're biking somewhere, you're not consciously thinking I should avoid the car, I should uh, notice the old lady crossing the street, oh there's a red signal, all of that stuff, like your intuition is, is driving the bicycle. Does that make sense? And so yeah, he resigned. Does that make sense, that analogy? And by going with what you feel, you'll make mistakes. But your intuition will learn and it will get better. And it will get better. And it will get better. Like for instance, when they ask who's the best chess player and everybody says Magnus Carlsen, then if you go and ask like the top grandmasters why he's so good, uh, they'll say that he has the best feel, he has the best intuition. That is the finest thing for a chess player is a good intuition. Anyways, and here we are for game two. Just sending a rematch, and I'll get the pleasure of going first. Yeah, then I'll play d5. <laughs> yeah, I'll play d5 on move one as white. That's very impressive. <laughs> now I'll play d4. That's better. See d5 from Dido. And uh, I play c4. The uh, the Queen's Gambit. And he plays the Martial Defense. Uh, named after named after Frank Marshall, who is most famous for losing that uh, incredible game against Capablanca, 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 Jose Raul Capablanca uh, in the 20s that I have done a video on on my channel. He was like uh, one of the best players in the USA in the 10s and 20s and he came up with this defense uh, against the Queen's Gambit and nowadays it's considered sort of a sub, sub par defense for black because um, and I, I, I played the wrong move by the way here the correct move is takes on move three for white uh, c takes d knight takes and then you try to win a tempo against the knight with e4 at some point maybe right away that's one of the variations um, so i'll do it now play c takes d after he played bishop f5 so the game went d4 d5 c4 knight f6 knight f3 bishop f5 and then c takes d5 and i think maybe actually the best move here is uh, bishop takes b1 although it looks very strange and here now we are in 
theory again after my little uh, wrong move order and here the best move is knight d2 threatening e4 forking these two guys and um, queen b3 will come probably at some point looking at b7 that was left by when the bishop moved out it's also looking at the weak f7 square all right so he played e6 and we play e4 and uh, this should just win a piece, I think. And yeah, that's one of the uh, great advantages of studying opening theory a little bit. That um, you get to play the first couple of moves of the game with an idea about uh, some tricks and some traps you could set and and sometimes you you can get a good advantage before you even start playing really and I mean for players on my level or on your level I, I guess that most of you guys are just kind of kind of new to chess maybe I, I guess that most of you guys are probably like not grandmasters and so when you're just like a casual player or chess enthusiast uh, chess theory is something else than it is for grandmasters um, if you're a grandmaster, you you know hundreds of openings. Okay, so he plays knight c6. I think we will go ahead and pin that. Bishop b5. Then we can castle. if let's just think about if bishop b4 check i think just knight will fail to takes and uh, takes takes and then i lose the rook so probably just bishop d2 yeah he did play did play bishop b4 check and I think so knight doesn't work I don't really want to play either knight to d2 so I think bishop d2 this also threatens just to exchange some pieces and since I am ahead in material that will benefit me and if you don't know this concept um, it's really useful I mean it's really really useful um, if you're a hit in material and what I mean by that is if you have more pieces than your opponent then trading the pieces down will enlarge your relative lead in pieces because if you have uh, if you're ahead 10 to 9 uh, that's not a big as big a relative difference as if you are ahead 2 to 1 so if you just trade 1 for 1 for 1 all the way from 10 to 9 down to 2 to 1 you are all of a sudden uh, all of a sudden you are doing very well you are up you have twice as many pieces as your opponent then my opponent plays f5 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 what do we want to do about that we could play 
knight c5, knight g5, knight c3. We could also capture here and then play knight c3, knight c5. I think bishop takes... No, that's bad. Bishop takes doesn't work because pawn takes. So... I think maybe just take it very slowly here with knight c3. We are getting ready to play in the monster knight on e5. Then we'll play check. If he hasn't castled, he can't play g6 because we sack the knight and then takes, we win the rook. Check, king moves, we exchange the queens. Have a good, very good position there. He has these doubled pawns. That we can play against with uh, rook c1. Looking at those, um, but I think the most relevant thing here is to get uh, get knight e5 in. He castles. I play knight e5, threatening c6, and also just having a very nice knight. Now I'm thinking about playing a3, kick the bishop. Um, if the bishop captures, it's very nice. I capture with the pawn and I solidify my pawn center, which is basically the only thing that I'm worried about. Um, only thing that I'm worried about here. Um, I'm thinking about how he's going to defend the c6 pawn. I'm thinking maybe queen e8 defense. And then a3 takes takes. Or bishop drops back. If the bishop drops back, we are not going to. We are not going to. Okay, he pushed. I guess that's really clever, actually. He pushed c5. So I think this is time to play a3, kick the bishop. Of course, we would like the bishop to capture the knight, so we can capture with the b-pawn, but probably the bishop is going to drop back. And in that case, I think we can actually win the c5-pawn. Although, although that's not so exciting. Maybe actually just playing knight c6 anyway, because this fork was quite good, maybe. Then okay, so he plays. This is kind of it's getting a little bit interesting now. Because I'm thinking, so he played c takes d, and I'm thinking that maybe I can now play the knight fork, knight c6, fucking queen and bishop. Queen moves somewhere where it's probably attacking the knight, so e8. I maybe capture this knight. Or just because then he captures here. Let's see. This is a little bit complicated. Knight c6, queen e8. Hmm. 
Knight takes knight. Bishop takes bishop. I don't think it's that good actually. How about knight takes knight? Just stop that. Then bishop takes bishop. And then maybe knight takes. We have like night chick. We have a lot of stuff going on here. We have a lot of stuff going on. If pawn takes bishop, pawn takes knight. That doesn't look good for me. Let's look at knight c6 again. Queen e8. Knight takes bishop. Pawn takes knight. Knight takes knight, maybe. Then pawn takes. Then pawn takes. Bishop. And queen takes pawn. Knight c6, queen e8. Knight takes bishop. Pawn takes knight. Knight takes knight. Pawn takes bishop. Queen takes pawn. I I mean I I win my pawn back, but it's not really very exciting. And also Maybe he can capture the knight like that. Then take and then take and then take here. Now that's a little bit of me with getting the bishop on c3. Uh, knight takes knight. Let's start with that. If queen takes, I probably win because I take the b4 bishop and then when he takes the knight I can take the rook, winning an exchange like that. So I don't think queen takes works. So I think only bishop takes bishop works. And then maybe I play Wait a minute, how about knight c6, queen e8, knight takes knight, bishop takes bishop, and then can I win a tempo against the queen with knight takes c7? Queen takes c6. It's, it's, it's kind of an interesting position, but I'm not really seeing my way out of it. Knight takes knight, bishop takes bishop, queen takes, and then queen takes my knight, and do I play It's just that that way he actually he actually gets this d4 pawn. I think I feel that I should go knight c6. I will go knight c6. 
but I can't say with any confidence that I'm sure it's the right move. It just feels, just feels right. What if knight takes my knight? Then I play pawn takes. And then I think he has a problem. So I think it's I think it's okay. I think it's okay. But he managed to uh, to draw up some pretty good counterplay. Even though I am um, up material, I'm actually not up that much right now. I have uh, knight for two pawns. So it's the equivalent of one pawn. And he has a very strong center here. If he gets uh, e5 in, could be big, 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 big problem for me. Uh, so, and so basically the reason I ended up playing knight c6 was that I felt that in many lines, lines I was able to, to win this d4 pawn, which I'd very much like to do. Because then his pawn center is not that scary. Yeah, he played c5, I had completely underestimated that move uh, on move 13. That gave him a lot of counterplay, very good find by Dido ASMR. Um, All right, so he played a move that I had not considered at all, but I think works out kind of in my favor because I win the pawn. Let's see if I'm if I'm right. He played queen d6, knight takes bishop. Let's say. Let's say pawn takes. Knight, then knight takes knight, queen takes knight, bishop takes pawn. So we take the knight, we take the bishop, I mean, knight takes b5, b4, knight takes b4, alright, and do we play, do we play knight takes knight, he will then play pawn takes bishop, Or do we play pawn takes pawn? Pawn takes pawn could be good. Bishop takes pawn. Also quite good. Knight takes bishop. I think it's fine. We win the we get the we get the pawn back. That was what we wanted. And now his uh, Without the d-pawn, his, his pawn center is not that scary. I can maybe play rook e1, put some pressure on the e-file, on the e6-pawn here maybe. Let's say knight takes bishop, b takes... Knight takes... <laughs> These arrows not working my way. I takes bishop, b takes c3. And it's important not to try and flick in uh, queen takes queen because he would have id2 check before he recaptures. That would be terrible. So now we just exchange. knight for knight and if queen takes we just trade and we have a very good long range piece for a good end game and if pawn takes we will play queen d4 threatening mate he'll have to defend that and then we'll figure out what to do 
So Pontex is probably the most ambitious he could play. Okay, he just exchanges. That is fine. Let's claim this file because if either rook let's, let's say rook and f to e8 I exchange he recaptures and I get the uh, I get the a5 pawn and and if he doesn't do anything about it I infiltrate with rook e7 threatening a nasty windmill check on g7 you would then have to maybe play something like rook f7 i play the other rook to e1 threatening check so i think we have ourselves a winning winning end game here um which is nice because it's a it's a kind of a simple simple win from here i think oh nice move he played though he's playing he played really nice there uh rook uh, rook on f to d8 so if i infiltrate with rook e7 he can then play d4 shutting down my bishop so what i have to do is play rook on a to d1 so that i can capture on d4 if he plays d4 very nice move messing with my plans so i was just trying to say that the position was kind of simple uh, but of course chess is never really completely simple uh, if your opponent knows what he, she, or they are doing. And I must say, Dido's quite impressed me today. Let's see, now I think he has a problem though. Because g7 uh, is going to be a bit of a problem on, on g7 now. So I think maybe playing g6 is kind of the most ambitious try, but okay, so check. And of course he can't play king h8, so he has to go king f8, then rook e1 then I'm guessing he has to play rook e8 hmm I'm not sure what he's thinking that much about because problem here with okay he did play that so either I am missing something or I have checkmate with rook g6 that's not checkmate no because he can play the nice move d4 so what I have to do actually is kind of funny I have to play rook g4 he cannot capture that with his f pawn because he's being checked by the uh, the bishop but the, he only has one legal move in that position that is to play d4 i can then capture that with check and when he captures with the rook i can capture his rook Um, on 
unless maybe it's faster to actually play I think it could be faster to play rook f no not rook rook bishop bishop to d4 here I think it's actually the cleanest way to do this then he won't be able to push there's no way he can stop then he would have to play h6 yeah h6 saves him from the checkmate so is it really rook g4 that's the best one rook g4 d5 rook takes and there's no rook takes because mate and if if f takes g4 i think i have rook takes d8 double check mate yep so we go check i think that's the correct way to go about it so only move now is d5 i then play rook takes if he takes my rook i win with the double check checkmate which would be kind of nice uh, and if he plays rook take okay so you'll see so rook takes if rook if pawn takes rook then checkmate like that boom if rook takes rook then checkmate like that so rook takes That's an interesting end to the game let's see if i missed something let's see if i missed something or if i get the the pleasure of delivering a double check checkmate double checkmate with exactly the same amount of points but you get style points style points nice oh that was a nice way to end the game thank you so much to dido mr awesome dido and yeah if i hadn't made it uh, clear enough he has a very nice youtube channel he makes chess videos he makes uh, card trick videos that are really mind-blowing and like he makes a lot of stuff he has a really nice whisper voice and a really nice soft speaking voice his production quality is is always top-notch and i cannot recommend it enough so um, yeah and of course he you can go and watch all his thoughts on the video over at his channel you can watch it from his perspective over at his channel so um thanks for watching i hope you had a good time i know i sure did now i'm going to chat a little bit with dido about the games